Roll up, roll up, one day and one day only. Hook a duck with a difference. Give us a go, mister. Yeah, not that one, little girl. No, look. Welcome to Scrap Heap Challenge, where this week our teams are angling to net a big catch. Yes, our challenge is to reel in the best scrap and create car fishing contraptions. This week, our two teams of Ferris fishermen must make machines that can retrieve three floating minis, all moored at different distances, without the teams ever leaving dry land. They must catch the minis only by using a flat plate on its roof. Reel them in and dump them on the dock. Team One are a squadron of British Airways pilots from north of the border. Skippered by Captain Andy Thoyers, who is assisted by his scavengers, First Officer Andrew Eels and Captain Paul War. They are the Flying Scotsman. Team Two are a trio of tractor fanatics from Devon. Scavengers Steve Johnson and Steve Hill are agricultural engineers, while Captain Gary Stevens is a combine harvester demolition derby champion. They are the Nuzzling Badgers. OK, teams, your fishing challenge has been set and your keep nets await. You have just ten hours to build your tin trawlers. Go on the sound of the gong. Wait for it, wait for it, wait, 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 wait. Go! Hey guys, what do you think then? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be a magnet, isn't it? Magnet. What do you think of that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bit different. Uh, something heavy to start with, something nice and rigid to build from. Gotta no. be magnet, strong magnet. Yeah, yeah good magnet. idea. Helping our teams to tackle this task, we have two experts in mechanical angling. With the Flying Scots is Andrew Downs, who has spent 27 years designing, manufacturing and installing vacuum lifting equipment. Running his own company, he is certainly no sucker when it comes to success. Hey guys. Hi. Got some ideas? <laughs> We're getting there. there. <laughs> I heard you mentioned magnets. Yeah. And I don't know an awful lot about electromagnets, do you guys? They're yeah. on or off. <laughs> <laughs> well, my ideas for this is not using magnets, right. but using vacuum suction. Vacuum. Big, a big suction pad. Right. Okay. Very lightweight jib crane. When I say lightweight jib crane, I'm talking scaffolding pole, yeah, yeah. something similar. Yeah. The Scots plan to stay on shore and mount an 18 metre scaffold fishing rod onto a heavy vehicle. Using a vacuum pump, reservoir, and a long length of hose, they hope to grab the mini with a suction pad before hauling it into the shore. Finally, landing the calf in the water using a heavier jib arm. Whilst light and easy to move, the length of their rod may make it very unstable. If we could produce a 100% vacuum, pick up well over a ton. How about lifting it up once we've attached it and dragged it in? There's loads of options. Uh, manual system. Simple, right? manual, simple system. manual system. Yeah. Really depends on what we find out there on the yard. Bolstering the badgers, we have an old scrap heap hand. He's Nick Bunch, an experienced marine salvage engineer who works on coastal and river defence schemes. They should be able to bank on him. Car fishing, guys. I want to try and keep things light. We can't put a hook on anything. So I'm, I'm thinking of some sort of magnet, like you yes. said, a magnet to perhaps get a car up. So I'm trying to think of something that's nice and light that we can go out, catch the car with, bring it back, and then have a way of lifting it onto the shore. Yeah. Right, yep. Yeah. yeah. No problems. The Badgers plan to build a floating crane using barrels for buoyancy. Working it remotely by using rods and ropes, they hope to hold the mini with an electromagnet. Once alongside the bank, they then intend to lift and swing the mini ashore using a counterweight. Controlling their floating fishermen may prove easier said than done. As we take this weight up, that rotates up just like a seesaw and brings the mini up. Hmm. Quite complicated, isn't it? <laughs> so list. 
Uh, we Lots need some type of magnet, don't we? Yeah, we yeah. Do. We need a good, heavy vehicle. This is critical. Some sort of hub for our swivel base. Box section steel for there. Crack on then, chaps. All right, see ya. Let's get going. OK. With our school of scavengers streaming off towards their metal maggots... Will the Badgers skate into the lead, or will the Flying Scots batter the opposition? <laughs> we'll have to mull it over. <laughs> I can't go on, I've got a terrible haddock. This week, both teams are stretching their talents to the limits and building huge car-carrying cranes in order to retrieve three floating minis. Right, I think we need to get some straight edges and actually start marking out what we're actually going to uh, use the... Uh, how we're going to make up the jib. Yep, let's right, create some space and get going, yeah. Tractor Fanatic's The Nuzzling Badger's watery plan is to float their pontoon into place with long scaffold poles before magnetically hooking their catch. If you can get me the plate yeah. and the seal, yeah. I can be making this up some pad by top, yeah. While our pilots, the Flying Scotsman, are staying landside and going for a giant vehicle-mounted fishing rod with a vacuum sucker to pull in their haul to the bank. It chocks away as our teams race to trawl the heap to net the finest fillets on offer. They're <laughs> really busy. Yeah, Scotsman flew. What about the bad uh, uh, the badges, badges were nuzzling? <laughs> right off, the badges are in the undergrowth. Gary found a pulley for the block and tackle. It's brilliant, like I say, bring it in. Right out. And make a good start with an old block and tackle. That's going to be the inside area of our pontoon for the car to go in. Meanwhile, the canny Scots, having had a hose around, spot a potential pressure cylinder. Yeah, we've got a big uh, compressor cylinder here, kind of heavy needle lift. Paul, just get your names on it first, that's the main thing. This will be handy as a reservoir for their suction device. Oh, oh, there's metal yeah. flying in every direction. It is. <laughs> Badgers Steve and Steve put their backs into clearing the heap of flotsam and jetsam in order to build their pontoon. Back in the Bodgers build area, expert That's Nick is drawing up an exact outline of their crane on the floor. Foot clear. If worse comes to worse, if the pontoons are sunk to water level, which they can't be, that will still be at key level. Yeah. Gary seems less than convinced. We need to look for uh, a chassis or a trailer or something. It might, it might be worth looking into that other area. OK, and the compressor. I think they're coming back. As Andrew arrives back with a pressure cylinder to give the team something to work on... Excellent. Paul carries on the search for a vehicle. That looks like an enormous suspension bridge of some sort. <laughs> this is, fourth fourth this road is, bridge, that's yes, what it is. It's a, model, it's a model of that. That's, that's what we're, uh, a model fourth road bridge. And I can't help thinking, you know, car's quite heavy, yeah. quite a long way from the edge of the... We're not proposing to pick it up, though. Ah. We're sucking onto it with a suction pad and dragging it back so to where the, the jib crane's strongest. And then, and then you lift it. Then lift it from the air, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're sucking it. With sucking it, what, with it. Like, a, like, a, like a sink plunger. Very similar. Wow. He's Same technology. Expert, so. We've already got the reservoir, so we're... That you normally pressurise that. So yeah, yeah. Normally, but, but you we're going to use that as a vacuum reservoir. So you'll pump the air out of out that? Out of that. Yeah. That's our storage then. So right. when we turn the valves on to the suction pad... So it's, it's quick well, then. So once it's on there, it's not yeah, like you don't rapid. have to wait 10 minutes while you pump the air. And then just drag it back in. Drag it back in. More of a lever, we're talking about a lever sort of method, just something simple to lift it out. Right, so that's Back just mounted on... Oh, I see, you're looking on a vehicle. vehicle. Yeah. Forklift we're looking at, yeah. but um, anything right. of that sort of ilk. So you need something fairly heavy. Yeah, then, yeah, to yeah. Weighty. Yeah. 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 Counterbalance the weight of yeah. the... Uh, no, that, oh, no, it does look almost possible. <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost. <laughs> uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard this British Airways flight from Denver to Scrappy Challenge. The Flying Scotsmen are our team of pilots from Edinburgh and, amazingly, are all married to women called Heather. They're led by Captain Andy Thoyers, who got into flying thanks to his wife. My wife made a big mistake of buying my gift voucher for my birthday one year and I uh, went to the Flying Club in Aberdeen and uh, just the rest is history, as they say. Assisting Andy on the team is his boss, Captain Paul War. I'm normally the one in charge at work, so I'm Roles are being reversed, and I'm quite happy being the general dog's body. Final team member is First Officer Joker Andrew Eels. 
I've known the other guys in the team probably about uh, two or three years now. Uh, met them through work and we fly together on a regular basis. And he's big, he's got a brawn, but he's got a little bit of brains as well to him, so uh, nice guy, very laid back. They mean business as they aim to propel themselves into the next round. Water, land, air, you name it, we'll, we'll quite happily do it. Anything at all. Hi, we're, we're the Flying, Flying Scotsman. Back on the heap, our high flyers seem a bit grounded as the forklift proves a dead end. I don't think the forklifts are going. I'll keep trying, though. OK, keep looking. Oh. Nothing but scrap, is it? Yeah. Ba -do, ba -do. Keen eyed expert Andrew seems to be very fussy. We can fill that hole up with yeah, well. Yeah, it's too heavy. We're going to bend the jib. As they search for something to make the suction plate out of. Finding a vacuum pump is just as hard. Trouble is with this, if we dead end the input within two minutes, that'll be red up. Right. At the moment, we, we seem to be having problems finding materials. We've still not got a vacuum generator. I think we know what we're looking for. I just think they've missed it every time. Not giving up, plucky Scott Andrew tries again with some sheet metal to make the suction pad from. That'll do. At last, expert Andrew can start work. Yeah. Is uh, and yet still we brought back good enough for the main frame, and we're still looking for a bit for a beam. So we're going to allow whatever we're going to have. Let's allow. Is this radio not what? Is it right down? <laughs> As Steve's question falls on deaf ears, the scavenging badgers bash on, collecting barrels and poles for their pontoon. Nuzzling badgers. Nuzzling badgers. I'm guessing the um, tape measures aren't laid down just randomly. This is scientific. Build it and see if it fits. Draw it on the floor, and if it doesn't fit on the floor, we're not going to build it. So, um, fishing for cars. Any experience of fishing? For um, cars, uh, fishing, yes, but not necessarily for cars. No. Uh, just a little bit more than what um, we're used to doing in Devon, anyway. Okay, so tell me about your design. What are you going for? Uh, going basically for a pontoon effect. Right. Push out to the vehicles, barrels all the way around, lasso the car with the magnet. Lasso the car with the magnet? Yes. And then we're going to uh, then bring it in technically, lift it out on the side, I get another one. Job's good. Now, I have to ask you, Gary, where do the name Nuzzling Badgers come from? Basically, we're uh, all very, all got, all three of us got very short hair, slight bits of grey here and there. We always reckon that Steve was bold and wise, so he's bold badger. Steve Johnson is grey as a badger. And between those two, they reckon I'm rough as a badger. <laughs> so basically, that's where it's come from. The nuzzling badgers from deepest Devon are just potty about tractors. Led by Captain Gary, rough badger. I like tractors. With scavenger Steve Grey Badger. It's just a pleasure to drive. And Steve Bold Badger. I love tractors. I know these two guys. I have the pleasure of uh, selling the equipment uh, for the trade, um, taking the money off them. Banking badger, eh? Gary is our captain because we don't trust him to go out in the yard and pick up the bits that we actually need. So, yeah. uh, for me and Steve. Uh, thanks very much, chaps. Tractors don't have the uh, same effect as cigars to the other two Steves. Love driving tractors. They get quite uh, personal about the size of the tractor. We've got electronic spool valves. Everything's computerised. Hydraulic linkages. Computerised gears. Basically, the tractor will drive itself. <laughs> I can't think how to stop. <laughs> they intend to plough through the opposition. We're in it to win it. When it comes down to it, we, we are very competitive. We are the Nuzzling Badgers. I think I've found some angle. I think we might have to tow this one in. Inspecting an old milk float, Grey Badger spots a novel feature. So it's a bit of angle. And what's that on the back? Your ice creams, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Whippy. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Whippy, yeah. <laughs> two can build this and two can get on with a pontoon, so we can build these in parallel. Yeah, right, we have got here uh, the remains of ice cream wagon. Yeah, that's an ice cream bath with loads of angle around. There's an axle on it, we could have the hub off probably as well. It depends on how much time you're going to be spending trying to get it in, Steve. Really, yeah, okay, <laughs> right. Sounds like Captain Gary Rough Badger yeah. wants to get a move on. Right. Morning, Steve. 
I was, hoping, I was hoping you can give me some nuzzling lessons because I quite like that because you do, seem to be doing top top quality nuzzling. <laughs> other teams, yeah, well, other teams do scavenging. You nuzzle yeah, around. Yeah, we nuzzle. Yeah. yeah. Well, we want to use this. I was going to drag the whole thing well, back. We we think probably yes some because good we, bits of we want a hub as well. So we're doing, two that, job, yeah. we're doing two jobs in one. So yeah. He's going to pull it up this way. Pull it up that yeah. way, right? Yeah. yeah. Run me over first. Steady, boy. <laughs> Grey Badger's tractor driving skills nearly impress Rob. Spotting an old Range Rover, our ground crew try to clear its path. The weight of a Range Rover should make it perfect for their land-based fishing rod. No, there's a couple of wires hanging out the dash. If they can get it going. Yeah. How are you? Hot wiring vehicles. Meanwhile, the Badgers start getting their vehicle back and demand tea. Get the kettle on. Chicken sausage. Now, you know, Lisa, as well as I do, that your badger, when cornered, can be dangerous. But what I didn't realise is quite how dangerous. But I went out with the nuzzling badgers and they said, we're just going to pull this old bit of milk float out. And they did. But at like 40 miles an hour, straight at me. They're really dangerous people. I, didn't, I thought that my life flashed before my eyes. It didn't take long. It wasn't much. <laughs> but it was pretty scary. But I went and chatted to the, to the Nuzzlings Captain Gary, and he obviously had it very clear in his mind what they're going to do. And their expert, Nick, had drawn a beautiful picture on the floor wow. of what they were going to build. Cost over a couple of tape measures. So all they had to do was like painting my numbers, just fill in the picture right. with some metal, and they were sorted. Unlike the lacklustre Scots, who are far from flying. That's a misspent youth. With Andy's joystick work a failure, they decide to try and drag it out with a quad. That is not going to move. We'll try it. No idea. Andy takes another approach to the problem. Yeah, we'll try moving this with a quad where it needs, needs to be running. Uh, I think we're going to need your expertise out here. Hey, Andy, Mum, are we out? Where are you? Casting a long look at this challenge is our judge, Bob McGrain. With over 30 years' experience in the crane industry, he's worked all over the world supervising heavy lifting operations. So the heap should be small fry for him. Now, Bob, nuzzling badgers aren't like gentle scavengers. They're quite... Um... No, they're ripping into it. And the team's working well together, I think. Yeah. And there's Absolutely. a lot of communication going on. Yeah, I mean, and also their design idea strikes me as being quite a good one, as long as their floating pontoon doesn't just float away. Yeah, this introduced a bit of a complication because lifting and floating don't go very well together. They may not go together, but some of the world's largest cranes have been built to lift things on or out of the water. These huge floating monsters are capable of lifting up to 4,000 tonnes in weight. That's an entire scrap heap full of cars. Am I right in assuming they're not actually trying to lift the, the Mini out of the water while it's fully floating? No, they, part of the... they couldn't do that. They'd have to make an extremely strong pontoon to do that. All they're using the pontoon for is to go out and capture right. the car, bring it back to the shore, and then in effect they're going to convert their pontoon into a land-based crane right. to make it more stable so that they can lift it out of the water. Now, the Flying Scotsman, though, they're, they're, I've only seen the drawing of what they're, they're attempting to do, but it does look like the fourth road bridge with only one pillar. Because, I mean, presumably, once you've got an arm that long, it might not go do that too much, but it could also do that. It can sway and bend. A single pole sticking out is very weak. Right. So unless they keep it dead level, if, they, if it allows to tilt over, then what we'll see is a very big curved right. fishing rod. And since we're aiming at a static object they yeah. don't want that no. to happen it's got to stay straight otherwise yeah. they won't be able to deliver their lifting device yeah. over the roof of the mini both of these designs very different approach both seem fraught with huge problems i mean if you've got a favorite at the moment that i think by the way I, things are going at the moment it's the nuzzlin badgers that seem more positive they give me a bit more confidence right. that they will deliver so you're, the going, machine. you're going with the nuzzlers i am at the moment underdogs the scots have wasted a third of their build time so let's hope Captain Andy's electrical skills are better than his scavengers. Ah. Good job, it's four-wheel drive. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Sorry, guys. <laughs> Impatient to get going on the build, he's driving like a lunatic. The brakes don't work very well. 
I just hope he doesn't fly planes like that. Was it just the battery? I think it was a runner till you got your hands in it. <laughs> so as First Officer Andrew shoulders the blame for the delay, at least now their build might take off. May not start again. <laughs> if you and Johnson can start making the pontoon as such. Yeah. OK. Already um, off the mark, the tractor boys start on the finer details of their floating pontoon plans. If this is end on on the front one, we're going to have something like this around it. And we'll then have our platform standing up off here. Sparks fly as the Devon lads start building frames for their water-based crane. And just as airline Andy gets ready to start taking the roof off, expert Andy spots a useful door seal. That's nice, that. I like that. Don't damage it. No. Take off now, Which he hopes to use on the edge of the suction pad. Yeah, I'm getting a bit worried about the pump, really. I'm only thinking about it and getting a bit worried about all of it. We need to get started building, that's the thing. Yeah. So as the badgers start flying, the Scots begin digging holes in their vehicle. This week, our two teams are fishing for glory by constructing huge car-collecting cranes. The nuzzling badgers are hoping to float their way to victory with a remotely operated magnetic pontoon. While the flying Scots are going to land the big catch with a shore-based vacuum-powered fishing rod. With three hours lost finding something to mount it on, they need to make up time. It's a convertible. We lose all this rubbish, then take out four notches. Yeah. With a bit more time on their hands, the Devon lads have a chat over tea to decide the right design for their swivelling hub. So it actually sits on there. The more we can have down there, the yeah, better. Yeah, do that. The hub is a crucial part of their build and is the pivot point for their crane. With all the weight of the mini, its ballast and the crane arm itself bearing down at this point on their pontoon. It must be correctly positioned and up to the job, or the whole thing will collapse. We just gas the bolts off, gas, well, gas well, through that cover. Well, we don't need to gas it off. Sit that flange on that flange, roll it right round. Yeah. In true Devon tractor speak, they now seem to have a plan. Oh, I'm a flying Scotsman. <laughs> How's it all going? Slowly, but we're getting there, I think. OK, so tell me the plan of action. It's the chassis of the Range Rover you want. Yeah. We went to weld some beams onto the chassis and some uprights. So we've got uh, a support for the bit of, uh, scaffolding pole, which will be the, the arm that reaches out to the, the minis. OK, now we're, we're a fair way through the day. And yeah. it does sound to me like you still have an awful lot to do. You've still got to find the suction pump for a start. Yeah, you? Yeah. Are you getting worried about time? Yeah, we are worried about time. I mean, we do feel we've got a lot to do yet, so uh, we really need to get cracking, I think. And um, what do you reckon's your expert? Do you reckon he's yeah, worth listening yeah, he's, to? Yeah, he's, he's not bad. He's doing the job. Is he? Yeah, for an Englishman. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll leave you to it. Expert <laughs> Englishman Andrew is working on the suction pad, flattening it off before reinforcing the circular sheet and then lining the edge with the Range Rover door seal to make an airtight contact with the top of the Mini. In this week's Scrap Lab, we take a look at the principle behind vacuum lifting. In order to create the vacuum, we're using a domestic hoover and a suction pad we've made by cutting a circle out of a flat piece of wood and lining the edge with some rubber, which makes for an airtight seal. Completing our device are some bike handlebars and a hole for the suction tube. Finally, for a weighty test with our pad on the ceiling and the hoover switched on, can it hold Rob's weight? Easily. The reason this works is because of atmospheric pressure. This is the weight of air, approximately 10 tonnes per square metre, pushing against the pad when we create a vacuum on the other side. When we switched on the hoover, despite it not creating a complete vacuum in our half metre pad, it can still hold 600 kilos. And as Rob only weighs 90 kilos, he remains stuck to the ceiling. But only as long as the hoover's switched on. If we had got the bolt there, right, or where we're going to stick for the end, we blow the hole, we can blow the hole in there, we can weld day on, and that one could be welded to that one. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> 
Well, it often happens on the heat, Bob. There's one team seems to be working incredibly well. I think there's just the wrong name, you know, the, the nuzzling badgers. They're the, the speedy badgers. Yeah, I think the badgers have got an advantage in that what they're doing is what they do for a living. When a captain tells them what he wants, each of them knows how to do it and yeah. they're just going about it. The Scotsmen, on the other hand, they seem to have got sucked in on the details. Mm. Uh, the vacuum device and bits of pipe. So, I mean, are they actually constructing the vacuum device at the moment? Yeah, they've built the reservoir and they've started making the vacuum pad. They've got the pipe work there, right. but they have yet to find a compressor to convert into a vacuum pump. So without that, the whole thing is right. not going well, to work to, at they've all. They've just got to suck on the end of a straw for a long and time. And hold the breath for a long time, which I think might be <laughs> somewhat difficult. <laughs> so at the moment, it sounds like your favourite vote is still going to go with the badgers. Am I right? I'd have put a fiver on them previously. I might go to a tenner this time. As our hotly tipped badgers pursue a bevy of barrels, they suddenly spy something. Hey, what's this here, look? Ah. Yeah. Magnets. Yeah. A set of gate posts with magnetic locks on. Ah, could they work as a lifting device for their crane? Excellent, guys. So we want who la. What up, boys? We've been all day waiting oh, for that. Yeah. Blimp that. What's wrong with you guys? Are we going to have trouble with you, pal? <laughs> me. Sounds like they're happy. At the heart of their crane is an electromagnet. Unlike a permanent magnet such as a compass, these only work when you pass a current through a length of metal, creating a magnetic field by causing the electrons to flow from positive to negative. By winding the metal round an iron bar, the magnetic field is transferred to the bar and amplified, allowing you to pick things up. But only when the current is running. We want six foot to the bottom of the beam, and what did we say for the beam? Above water. With over half the day gone, the Scots mull over the height of their lifting arm. I say 1.6 then, that's five foot, and then we've got six foot, so we've got 11 foot of that. Ah, uh, well, let's just, just do something. Not quite as exacting as the badgers. Yeah. They make a start on the main upright beam that will support their entire structure. Still without a vacuum pump, however, they go for one last look around. Oh, hang on. There's a compressor there. Compressor, is it not? Way! Way! At last! <laughs> Gee, he was. Andy and Andrew. Go ahead. We found a vacuum pump. Well, hey, great, super. <laughs> Finally, from an oh, old industrial floor cleaner, the pump to make the suction pad actually work. Uh, teams, you have three hours of build time remaining. Three hours remaining, team. Thank you. With time running out, expert Nick turns the screw on his team's efforts. How far apart have we got there? Two metres clear, which is a mini plus a couple of feet. As they start to assemble the frames for the barrels on their watery pontoon, Gary and Steve work on the axle hub that will allow their crane arm to swing the mini ashore. Well, I say, as long as you're happy with that there, because I don't want if it failed, I don't want somebody saying, oh, we should have done that. i put some weld in it. Build it up again. Yeah, but the thing is, where you'll pull, that's all. If that breaks, I'll eat my goggles. <laughs> Better get some ketchup then. <laughs> right, yeah. The land-based Scots try their lifting arm in position for the first time. <laughs> I ran out of moment. <laughs> so just run me through what's happening, guys. Is this going to be your fully extended? No, no, no. no. Oh, fully extended arm is going to come out lower down. And yeah, that stays floor, rigid. That yes. stays stays oh. rigid. So it's like a fishing it. fishing rod. So we. Reel it in here and then yeah. lift it up with this. But, uh, but and, and all the suction stuff and that is all coming the together. Pumps all there. The, oh, the seals all made up and things. Oh, just great. For the glue to dry. Oh, so now it's basically all the you just got to. We've not just really. a bit of construction together, together and yeah. you're all done. We're all done. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Just do the fishing rod, which is only a small. Part the fishing rod the is a, is a minute <laughs> bit of the whole thing. <laughs> so we've got to allow 100 mil for the box to do. We've got the hub dropping down for it. Yeah. So that brings up there. We've got 15 mil of. Hub. Steve hits a raw nerve as Captain Gary tries to ensure that his hub is at the right height to work. 
but he may have taken his eye off the ball by making it a bit too long. I'm quiet, I'm going to shut up. Oh, you... I didn't lay for that collar, did I? So Gary has to trim it down while the rest of the team fit the barrels into the pontoon frame. Yeah. All right. I don't think we're getting much closer anyway. Near enough. With all his measuring, Nick may have accidentally cut up one of Grey Badger's brackets. Who cut up that? Not me. I did. Oh, I saw it as your bit of... Steve, it's a sort of job creation scheme, you know. You make oh, yeah, it, I'll yeah. get rid of it. Instead of putting the tube through it, we're going to weld this across the top, and that's the, that's the oh, weaver. Oh, it's just such a simple thing. What? Let's just do it. The Scots are also getting a little frayed as they worry whether their crane arm needs an extra scaffold tube to help them lift the mini. Andy, I, stuff it. Go with the tube. We're heavy enough to lift the mini. Time to start assembling the fishing rod into position. Right, we want a prop, don't we? We need a strop. OK. Without getting strung up about it. So are we saying then, we're going to go to the front of the car front of the car, now. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's brilliant, yeah. I thought that was a plan all along, I think. Right. Just hold it there, I'll get a clamp on it. I haven't actually seen the, the, the spar. They keep saying, you know, that's where the 15 metre long spar joins. I have this really quite small little socket they've built on the back of the, their car. I mean, it does look like it's going to be... It doesn't have to do very much. There's very little weight that's going out on the end of it. So, uh, and they've got putting some good guy ropes on it, which should hold it in place. So, so it is like a sort of giant tent pole going outside. Yeah, all it's got to do is drop their vacuum pad on the roof of the car mm. and its, its job is done. I mean, I can sort of imagine that one working, although it's quite hard to picture it at the moment. But the one that's a complete mystery is how you steer a pontoon you know, like the, the, the badgers well, have made, you know, at that, that distance. You're probably right. Their biggest problem will be keeping the pontoon out there. Once they've got the pontoon out round the mini... Yeah, then they're all right, aren't they? I think so. But, I mean, do you think one's got a, a slight advantage over the other in, in terms of...? I think the um, badgers' engineering is much more accurate, much more detailed than the Scotsman. Accurate, eh? Well, this time, the badgers may have botched their measurements. One meter hang, on, is hang, there. On, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm just thinking, no, hang on. I've got that wrong. It's not going to work that high, is it? No. Because the jib will swing on it. The jib will get in between it, won't it? Because the jib's going to be here. Yeah, I've we both each other and cut them off, can't we? What do you think about the height? Yeah. The height of their jib's platform is critical to their pontoon's design. This platform must be above the key side when they lift the mini, because then all the weight is transferred to the key through the packing. If they try and lift any other way, their crane will flip over and sink. Wait, we're going to cut that one again, are we? Just cut oh, that off, yeah. Yeah, no, it's that's not, the no, it's no. wrong. Box all yeah, the it's only tacked there and there. Yeah. But you knock you off, turn the fucking thing around, doesn't matter, does it? So with the platform at the wrong height, Gary starts again. Guys, guys, you have a quick, really quick chat. Whoa. Now, Gary, you haven't got much time left. It looks nearly finished. Have you got much left to do? Uh, we're having a little bit of a, a problem here on the front end uh, as regards to how it all works when it goes over the key. We're, um, we're, we're not far away. We're, we're not very far. We're yeah. just literally, it's just all here. We're just literally just going to weld it on. Put it all together. Yeah. When I spoke to you earlier today, you were absolutely determined you were going to win this and um, there was no coming second. Do you still feel like that? Yeah. Steve doesn't seem so sure. While across the burn, the Scots decide to check the length of their rod to ensure it can reach the floating minis. Six metres ten. So I have two metres in there. Well, that'll do then. Let's just weld it on and... That'll do. A team's your attention, please. You have one hour remaining. One, one hour. hour remaining, teams. Thank you. You can see it back, can you? Yeah. It's flexible. Yeah, but when you build things flexible, they don't break, do they? Well, standing, standing. But are the Scots overreaching themselves? I I've ever suggested coming somewhere like this again. Shoot me. As their rod gets longer and longer. This one needs to be well tensioned. Otherwise, we're in the war. And droopier. Hey, one, two, three. That's it. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. This is ludicrously, absurdly, comically, but geniusly long. So has it been a good day? It's had its moments. Yeah. <laughs>
Joined it. I mean, are you happy with how it's gone today? Because it's been... I think it's been totally bonkers, basically. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? It's totally mad. It looks very stable and a very sensible road-going vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> you may have to tie a little red hanky on the very far end, <laughs> yeah, just to warn yeah. other vehicles. <laughs> Long vehicle. Yeah. But there are no red flags out for the Badgers as they make a dash for the finish line. Despite having to remake the base plate for their crane, they're still being incredibly exact as they mount the hub into position. Level it across the that's about it 400 there, there on the key edge, so that's all right. Well, look, the Badgers, they are definitely nuzzling. Oh, they're very fast nuzzling. But it's one of those ones, you know, sometimes you walk in and you go, oh, that's scrap made. And sometimes you walk in and go, that's beautiful and it's yeah. perfect and it's beautifully put together and the welding's perfect and it's gorgeous. Well, back. Back to you, yeah. It is very, very, very long. That's all I can say about it. I don't know if it's going to work. Is I don't it know. thin? It's very thin and very long and extraordinarily wibbly-wobbly. Is it going to be able to move any kind of mini? Well, it doesn't really have to, because all it has to move is its suction pad, which is really quite sweet in itself. It's big... and flobble it down somewhere near the mini. It sounds absolutely scrappy. This is never going to work. With the countdown running, the Badgers drag their crane arm into position. As the Scots put the finishing touches to their suction pad. Hang on, let's get this magnet in. It's nice. You boys will get it out of here tomorrow. With a gas veins, isn't it? <laughs> OK, teams, your time is up. You've had your ten hours. It's time to put down your tackle and prepare to do some heavyweight fishing on the riverbank tomorrow. Well done. Well done, boys. Let's hope you land the big one. Well done, teams. Great build. <laughs> well done, you lot. That's a pleasure, mate. That was good fun. Ah. Oh. Well, that's all right. So as our tired teams finish fabricating, will tomorrow prove a good day's fishing for the nuzzling badgers and their magnetically attractive floating pontoon crane? Or will the Flying Scots land the big catch with their ludicrously long land-based suction pad? With just an hour's tinkering time, both teams wade into finishing off their machines. The teams must use their huge hoists to catch three floating minis in the scrap heap's very own lagoon full of saloons, which are moored at 5, 10 and 15 metres from the bank. The teams must first get their cranes into position before going for a mini, and once they've landed one, must get it over the striped line into the car park to count. The barrelling badgers tackle up their car-carrying crane while the pole-dancing Scots rope in a bit of national pride to help their efforts. It is windy. It is windy indeed. It is windy. The minis are sort of staying roughly where we want them to stay, but it's a fair old stretch out there, isn't it? Yeah, then with yeah. the wind blowing like it is today, even this vehicle, which is working from the land, is going to be bobbing around it's all over the place. It's going to be fighting the wind, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yes. Well, it makes it a lot more interesting. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It is a first. We've never had anything re remotely resembling a suction pad. And scrappy before, especially one with a load of plastic bottles tied to it to stop it sinking. Well, I think the suction pad is, is a nice, neat idea, and I think that's going to work pretty well. All right, you do think it will stick on? My concern is more about the rest of the vehicle, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. Right, Flying Scotsman, it's time to go fishing for cars. You feeling confident? <laughs> feeling happy? Uh, moderately <laughs> happy, yeah. <laughs> now, your machine, which I see you very, very nicely named the pole dancer, yeah. uh, is, it, is it one of those machines which is, which is actually a bit deceptive? You know, it looks like a giant, slightly wibbly-wobbly fishing line or, or clothesline, but actually it's really robust and it's going to get those minis no problem. No, it looks no. like a wobbly fishing <laughs> line. That's <laughs> where it's going to be. <laughs> Strong as an ox. A few final adjustments and the bait is set. OK, Flying Scotsman, the official mini fly fishing season is now open. Prepare to cast your rod. Go on the sound of the horn. From the start position, they must first get their pad over the mini's roof. But that arm looks very fragile. I don't want to see him reversing a plane into a parking space. <laughs> a little bit more. Keep going, keep going. What what you man out there with you two, table, two tennis table tennis pads. That's what's wrong. Oh, dude, stop! Stop now. Stop, stop! Right, down now. Down, down now. No, that's it, perfect. Get the suction going. This oh, is the big test now. 
what will the pad do? Just to slow it again. Amazingly, their vacuum system seems to work as they slowly drag the Mini inshore. OK, so they've got to the side, but are they going to be able to land it? This could be the difficult bit. He's got hold of Mini, yeah. First, they need to get the hook on their heavyweight jib arm into position over the pad. Oh, still too short by about an inch. If we take your vehicle forward a bit. How are we doing, guys? This is getting heavy up yeah, here. Yeah, hurry up, let's move it forward. And make sure it is forward. We're on, okay, we're, we're on. on, we're on. We're on, we're on, we're on. Go that way. Oh, right. The hook is finally attached, but will the pad hold with all that weight on it? It's more weight. It's working perfectly and holding the entire 400 kilo car. So the suction pad works. Yep. Beautifully. But can they lift the Mini high enough oh, to get it ashore? Are we out? No chance. No, miles off. You try driving it forward. If they drive forward now, it's going to be a very, very scratched car. Right, give it a go, see what happens. It's going to catch. They've just got to go for it. There's nothing else they can do. Their only chance, but will the pad hold? Come on, keep going, 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 keep going. Why, George, I think they might have done it. Watch your feet, feet. Right, get out of the way, guys. Watch your head, let's go. It's landed, but it doesn't count until they park it across the stripy line. Bit more, bit more, bit more. Right, next one, next one. I'll do, let's go. Go backwards. Go back, OK? Yeah, yeah, go back. Where are we going now? Head for the white mini. You want to swing it? Where, where are you? White mini's next. I'll just try to get so we can get the dick. Watch it. Whoa! Oh, no. <gasps> oh, ah, oh. We've had a disaster. Oh, and it just, it's, it's not stopping. It's very peaceful. That was such a slow and delicate collapse. Whoa, stop! No. I think the pole's on its last dance. It's bent, it's gone. Has it? That's it, done. Oh, that Flying Scotsman! What happened? Oh, oh just <laughs> the, the wind. Our the wind caught it. The wind caught it. It was uh, a nasty case of the wind. Yeah. The, wind. the, wind. the yeah. suction worked perfectly, but yeah. the, the weakness was the pole. The wind oh. is a bendy pole, I'm afraid. It just wasn't strong enough. So with the Scots bagging one mini before their fishing rod took a dive, it was time to reset and see if the boating badgers could rule the waves. I'm quite alarmed by the nuzzling badger's machine. I mean, it looks like it's been made properly. Yes, and then to put it together in a day is... Yeah, it's extraordinary, isn't it? it? The only big problem is getting it into position. Yeah, I think it's, it's a nice piece of engineering, but I think it might be a bit slow. Right, nuzzling badgers, it's the moment of truth. Is there anything you'd change? No. No, I don't think no. so, no. No, you have to be with that? Absolutely. A bit less welding. These guys love welding. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> it would have been much higher if they hadn't been welding. But, uh... <laughs> Well, they sound confident. Nuzzlers, prepare to badger your minis. Go on the sound of the horn. Before they can make a move on the minis, everything must be shifted into position from the starting line. It's like the Royal Tournament, isn't it? The badgers are working really well together, but on. Captain Gary isn't too good at electrics. Brown's out, isn't it? No, it would normally be the other way around. Brown would be positive. Seems to be positive for the team, though, as they're right on course for the first mini. There she go. There you go. There she go. Right, right energise it. Yeah, do it now. I'm waiting to do it. 24 volt. Yes. Right. Look at that. Nuzzling. It's nuzzled. nuzzled. It's completely the nuzzled. The mini is nuzzled. But will the magnets hold the mini? Uh -huh. Right, bring it back in. Before they can even try to lift it, they need to pack under the crane so that the whole thing doesn't topple over. The welding's very pretty and their captain's not bad either, but is this going to hold up and get the mini out of the lake? Steady pull. Steady pull. One more. One more. One more. One more. Go on. Right, now tight. Things are looking good so far as they empty some balancing ballast. Time to try out the swivelling hub with all the weight hopefully on the packing. That is genius. 
<laughs> that works so beautifully. <laughs> This is one of the most graceful, genius machines I've ever seen. It's all working brilliantly well, and I'm just don't, that, I don't want to tempt that tempting fate? That, it's tempting so much fate. <laughs> As they park it over the line, it's time to go for the next one. All right. Oh, gently does it. That wind's really picked up. That's not going to help them. Hold your Steve. Hold it. Hold, hold it. it. That's it. Uh, quick. We've lost it. Pull him back, Steve. Gary, pull him back. The wind seems to be making things Steve, much more in. difficult second time round. Let's come this way. Here's him out. Keep you that rope? Don't let that rope go in. Don't let that rope go in. They're having to chase the mini, which uh, yes. they were expecting to um, were capture expecting a, a, a static, static yeah, mini. Instead of that, they're now chasing about, the mini. Blowing about at will, isn't it? Keeping them. Right. Right. Give a tap if we can. Again, and, again, and, again, and again. By cleverly bumping the mini, they've spun it round the right way. Right, yeah, keep going. Come on. Push. Drop. Energised. 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 Energized. Yeah. Having locked onto their quarry, they need to land their catch. It's a big one. A real big one. I'll make a waste of water in these droppers. Look too little now. Go on, badgers, pull it up. You can do it. They're looking tired, bless them. As the swinging mini skirts the shore, can the badgers heave it across the line and win? Oh. <laughs> well done, guys. Well done, boys. Yeah. Top man. Yeah. Did it. Well, teams, you both rose the challenge brilliantly. Uh, one machine worked a little bit better than the other machine. Uh, so, commiserations, but well done. This week's second prize goes to the Flying Scotsman. Oh, well, yeah, done. well done. <laughs> but as we all saw, it was so difficult to watch you nuzzling those minis. <laughs> it was, a, it was a, I, we were all going like, D -d -d just to the left of it, left to the right. It just drove us all crazy. But so, well done, guys. Top notch to the nuzzling badgers. And if you enjoyed that mini mayhem, then join us again next week for an even more wizard show. Yes, it's pinball scrap heap style, as our two teams build incredible ice riding oddities and go for broke to reach the semi-final.